have goals. But these goals won't just be about you individually being able to accomplish these goals. Because one of the things on that pyramid of success I talk about is being a team. And the big part of being a team is you have to be able to communicate with other people. And you have to work with other people. And you can never have any team chemistry for this reason. Mediocre people don't like high achievers. And high achievers don't like mediocre people. So if everybody doesn't buy into the same principles and values of the organization and the same high standard, you're never going to be successful. Just like our spring practice right now. You know what my goal with spring practice is? Get the right guys on the bus, get them in the right seats, and get the wrong guys off the bus. So one of these days, you're going to be working in an organization, and somebody's going to try to do that to you. So which one of those people do you want to be? Do you want to be somebody they're trying to get off the bus because you're satisfied with mediocre performance? Because you can never have any team chemistry in your organization if everybody's not committed to the same standard and the same things. You know, when I worked for Bill Belichick, we had one sign in the building. It was, do your job. And I, you know, you go in all these places and, you know, you see all these things. One sign, do your job. He defined the expectation for everybody in the organization, whether it was a secretary, the personnel people, the coaches, the players, the kind of players that we wanted, the kind of size they needed to be, the kind of personal characteristics we wanted them to have, the critical factors to play their position. But once it was defined, you had to be responsible for your own self-determination, and that is accountability. And, and you have to be able to communicate with other people and be a part of an organization and work with people to be able to do that. And you also have to be willing to serve other people to be able to do that. It can't be just about you. You may be motivated about what's about you, but in your life, it can't be just about you. You've got to serve other people. Let me ask you this. How do you pray? Do you pray to be blessed? Or do you pray to be a blessing? Somebody else has to bless you. But you can be a blessing to everybody that you meet. Everything that you do. By the positive energy and attitude that you have. What are you selling today? What feelings are you showing on your sleeve? I can tell some of our guys, the immature guys, when they come out to practice, whether they failed their math test, broke up with their girlfriend, something got wrong, something went wrong, because I can see it. And other guys are always creating positive energy that affects other people in a positive way. And if you're going to brand yourself, you're going to brand yourself as a person. Which one of those do you want to be? And the other thing is, is you always want to be smart about what you do. You know, Bill Parcells stood up here and told a story just a couple weeks ago when we had our clinic. And I put this sign up. I like this sign. You might think about this. He said when he was 14 years old, sophomore playing in basketball on his high school basketball team in New Jersey, and he had this coach that was like a legend in terms of how many games he won. They had a rule on their team. It's like you'll have a rule. You have rules here. You'll have rules in your organization. They had a rule on their team that said you can't talk to the official. You cannot talk to the official. Well, they were in a close game with their rivalry team, even though they were ahead by a few points. And he dove for a ball, and the other guy knocked it out of bounds, and the ref gave it to the other team. And he jumped up and screamed at the official and got a technical foul. Guy made the foul shots. Coach took him out of the game and benched him. Wouldn't play him anymore. They lost the game by two points. They had to 345. They had to be on the line every day for basketball practice. Coach kicked him out the first day, kicked him out the second day. Kicked him out the third day, fourth day. He says, come down to the locker room. I want to show you something. He has sign up in the locker room. Dumb players do dumb things. Smart players seldom do dumb things. It's all about choices and decisions. Then he asked him, which one of these are you? Are you a dumb player? Or are you a smart player? Which one do you want to be? Well, that's going to be determined by a large degree because of the choices and decisions you make. And it's not always, they're not always going to be made up by you. They're going to be made up by somebody else in the organization that you're trying to succeed in. 
and your ability to communicate is important. But, you know, one story I like to tell that happened to a player here that you all probably watch play, and I won't say his name, but he got in a little trouble when he was a freshman. And sometimes you got to make it about you and understanding the consequences and how they affect you. And he was walking. This guy didn't drink. He had over a three-point grade point average. He ended up being a captain on a team, made All-American, was a first-round draft pick. But when he was a freshman, he was walking behind Brian Hall. They were having a fraternity party. Some guys called him a bunch of names. They were drinking and carrying on. And he got really upset and mad at the disrespect that was shown to him. So he went over and grabbed one of them by the nap of the neck and shook him up a little bit. The police came, and he could have got arrested. So I called him in my office, and I said, man, you just can't do those kinds of things. Well, the first thing he was is defensive with me about what he did. You can't expect me to let people call me those kind of names, do those kinds of things, and not do something about it. And I said, you know what? I agree with you. I think you're right. But, you know, you're going to be a first-round draft pick someday. You're going to make $30 million if you're a first-round draft pick. If that cop would have given you an assault charge, you would be a third-round draft pick, and you would make $2 million. So even though I think you're right in what you did, now my next question is, for $28 million, is it worth it to be right? <laughs> so sometimes you've got to ask yourself that. And then, you know what his response to that was? You'll never have any more trouble with me, coach. I'll never do anything like that again. And he never did, and he really became a first-round draft pick and signed for $40 million. I missed it by 10. So, but sometimes you have to be able to realize what the consequences of your behavior is, regardless of what your emotional commitment might be to it. So that little pyramid over there that I talked about, be a champion. Who you are is important. Being responsible for your own self-determination is real important, which is accountability. Having positive energy and attitude to accomplish the goal that you have set for yourself. And your goal is a process. It's not a result. And you got to be a part of the team. And to be a part of the team, you got to buy into the principles and values of the organization. And you got to trust and respect the people that are on the team that you have to work with every day. And you'll always be able to accomplish more if you can do those things. So I appreciate your opportunity to come over.